You are listening to the Mamas in Training podcast, and I'm your host, Jessica Lorian. But if you just started listening recently and don't know, I'm not a mom. So why do I have a podcast about motherhood when I'm not a mom? Well, in this episode, I'm telling you why. My mission here at Mamas in Training is to give aspiring and expecting and even new moms guidance and community from moms who've been there. But why the heck would I make this my mission when I can't even relate to it and I've never gone through it? Two years ago, I started this podcast, back in 2019. Back then, it was under a different title, The Pumping Podcast. And in episode 20, I told my story. And just this past week on Instagram, I shared a very exciting update to my story that really made this journey come almost full circle. Since many of you have just started listening to the show, I thought it would be helpful to give you a little background on your host, who's not even a mom in the mom space, me. So stay tuned to hear my story as I reshare episode 20 and make sure to listen to the end because I have a really exciting update to share with you for where I'm at now. Before we get to the episode, I just want to share with you one of my favorites these days. Okay, I have a confession. It's safe to say that I spent 95% of the past year and a half in comfy clothes, and most days, PJs. Yeah, it's true. And you might have too, and you know, that's okay. I give you permission to always be cozy. And lucky for you, I have found the coziest clothes around from Kindred Bravely. From their PJs to their leggings, bras, shirts, and unbelievably cozy sweaters, they're perfect for this fall weather. And for always, let's be honest. Every piece of clothing I have from Kindred Bravely is made out of the most luxurious fabric I have ever felt. It's like wearing a soft cloud all day long. The best thing about Kindred Bravely's products is that the founder and CEO, a mother of two, created them with you in mind, a woman and a mom. Since I'm a mama in training, I haven't personally used their nursing bras. However, I surveyed my community of mamas and almost 100% of them recommended Kindred Bravely over another nursing bra. So if you're ready to get cozy, it's time to treat yourself. Go to kindredbravely.com and use the promo code TRAINING20 to get 20% off. That's K-I-N-D-R-E-D-B-R-A-V-E-L-Y dot com and use the code TRAINING20. The link is in the show notes. Here's to getting cozy. And now, here is my story. My health growing up was honestly pretty good. I never really had any big struggles health-wise. My skin was always really clear, even as a teenager, and life was pretty groovy. I was an only child, but all of my friends became my siblings, and it's kind of become that way throughout my adulthood as well. After I graduated from school, I decided to move right to New York City. I packed my bags and moved to the city without really knowing anybody, and very quickly within that time, I actually found my husband. We worked at the same restaurant together. It wasn't until one of our mutual best friends said to both of us, hey Jess, what about Kevin? And then, hey Kevin, what about Jess? That we really had our eyes opened to each other. So it all came down to this one conversation about salsa dancing. (laughs) I'll never forget it. Somehow the conversation came up in a group and I said, oh my gosh, I love to salsa dance. And I said, I haven't gone in so long. I used to do it a lot when I was in high school. I just would love to do it again. And now he turned to me. And for those of you who don't know him, he is a handsome Puerto Rican man. And salsa is in his blood. He was born and raised in Puerto Rico. And so he turned to me, this white chick from Massachusetts, (laughs) and was like, you salsa dance? And I said, yeah, I love to salsa dance. (laughs) And so we picked a date. Except we set it up with another girl who was also working. She definitely became the third wheel very quickly. (laughs) Oh my gosh, it's making me laugh just thinking about it. And needless to say, I definitely put him through the ringer. I made him go through leaps and bounds and wait months before we actually were a couple. But that was back October 2008. It's just crazy. I can't even picture my life 
especially in New York City, but life in general without him. He's a pretty wonderful person and I'm so, so lucky. Then I got an opportunity to travel the country and Canada with the National Tour of Beauty and the Beast. And this is kind of when my health journey begins. Around the time that I was auditioning for this tour, I had a lot of stress going on. I had been auditioning for a while and hadn't gotten anything. I started to develop some spots on my skin. And to be honest, at first I thought it was bed bugs because I live in New York City and what else are you supposed to think? But my best friend was visiting me for two weeks at that time and we were sleeping in the bed together and nothing had gotten on her. So we thought that was a little bit odd. Come to find out, I developed psoriasis and it was just a couple little spots at the time. And then I got the tour and I was on tour. About six months into the tour, I was completely covered head to toe. And I have to put a shout out there to all of my dear friends who were on the tour with me because they were just my rock. They would put lotion on my skin and would support me in so, so, so many ways. It was really amazing. But I mean, I don't know how to explain it other than to say I felt like a monster, literally. I was completely covered, minus my face, my scalp, my arms, my chest, my legs, my skin. I was totally covered and I was in unbelievable pain. I did everything from going on this weird, like, green apple diet where I only ate green apples for three days. <laughs> I was, I was truly desperate, if you couldn't tell. And I tried everything, all these homeopathic remedies, and nothing was working. So I had also learned that going gluten-free could help, so I decided to go gluten-free. I had all of my amazing castmates, like, bringing me gluten-free treats and gluten-free things. <laughs> it was so sweet. But then it was a year to the day that my skin was so bad, I just couldn't handle it anymore. And I decided to go on a medication. And the medication you've probably heard of, you've probably heard commercials for it, it's called Humira. It's a biological medication that you inject. So I decided to go on Humira, which was an adventure because now I'm traveling the country with these injections that I have to keep refrigerated every time that we travel and then I have to inject myself and it was a process but I got used to it. My skin started to get better and I felt pretty good to be honest um, but my skin did start to get better. It started to lighten up. It was still there. You could still see it but it lightened up but it was hard. I mean I always had people asking me like oh what did you get attacked by mosquitoes and I remember this one day specifically, we were in Washington, D.C., and I was wearing shorts because it was July or June, I think June, and I had been wearing pants all the way up till the whole time because my legs were just covered and I was embarrassed, and I finally had decided to wear shorts, and I was so proud and I was so excited to show off what my skin was looking like, and I remember I was walking out of the theater, and there was a local person, not someone who was on tour with us, who was walking behind me. And they just said, oh my gosh, what happened to you? And it was just heartbreaking. I just remember not even turning around and looking at them and walking away and just crying because <laughs> it was just hard. And it's one thing when the inside of your body is sick, you know, and you don't feel good on the inside, but when you externally are sick, and people can see it, you know, people just want to help and they just want to support, but they don't always know how to show it. So that was really hard. But a year after being on Humera, I was in Los Angeles and my now husband, Kevin, was with me at the time visiting. And I started to get this pain in my feet. And I thought it was from a brand new pair of sandals that I had just bought because that coincidentally was around the same time. And the pain was just stabbing and shooting and the heels that I wore in the show, I just couldn't wear them. It was so painful. And I think I made it through one show and then the next show I had to call out. I just call out meaning it, I couldn't perform in the show because it just hurt so bad. And I'll never forget Kevin was staying with me and the pain was so bad this one night that I literally couldn't make it to the bathroom to brush my teeth. I, I could not stand and walk to brush my teeth. And so he picked me up and carried me to the bathroom. 
but even standing there and brushing my teeth with the toothbrush was just excruciating. It hurt so bad. And basically, after that, the pain persisted on a weekly basis, pretty much every Saturday or Sunday. It was the oddest thing. So my body was, my skin was still sort of healing, but I was getting this reaction internally, and it was mainly around my ankles and my feet. Came up into my knees a little bit, but it was mainly centered around my ankles and my feet. After going to a couple doctors and them having truly no idea what was going on, I got a bunch of different tests. I ended up getting diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis. So basically the psoriasis was causing the arthritis. However, for the record, and I don't know if a doctor's going to listen to this, but I don't really care because in my opinion, the arthritis was definitely caused by the Humera. And you know, they put all those safety precautions in those commercials. Oh, you can get this, you can get this, you can get this, you can die, you, you know. And it was a year to the day, basically. I mean, within a week that I started that Humera. And so it's just way too much of a coincidence that I developed the arthritis. And I definitely would say it's from the Humera. But who knows? So that was my next battle to navigate. In the process as well, I developed something called vasculitis, which was the swelling of my blood vessels. And so I had these awful blister-looking things around my ankles and feet that were excruciatingly painful. Um, even the air, just brushing up against them, just felt so painful. My feet were swelling up really big and huge, and it was just awful. And once again, the doctors say, it's not connected. There's no connection. So I don't know about that. So I ended up finding a rheumatologist who immediately took me off of the Humera and put me on two other medications, one for my skin and the vasculitis, which was called Dapsone, and another medication that's called Methotrexate. And the more and more I talk about my experience, the more and more I find that people know exactly what methotrexate is. But basically, for anybody who doesn't, um, it's an extremely strong drug that's used for many different things, one being for certain cancer patients. And when you're on methotrexate, you have to limit your drinking because it can cause kidney and liver failure and trouble. As a result, you have to take iron as well, and I've become um, slightly anemic. I bruise like super easily now because of it. And in addition, um, you can't get pregnant. And basically, if I were to get pregnant while I'm on the medication, they, I would have to have an abortion. It wouldn't be um, even a question. So now, that was 2000 and... 13 that I went on methotrexate and for the past six years now, wow, time goes by so fast, I've been on the medication and my skin has been very clear and I've had no pain. I've been feeling really great. Um, I go to the gym very regularly. I lift weights um, and I feel like I'm fairly healthy and I have no pain. My skin um, is very clear. I maybe have a couple spots here and there, but um, not nowhere even closely imaginable to what it used to be like. So then comes my love for kids. And I don't really even know where this ever came, but I just love kids more than anything in the entire world. My husband actually, he often makes fun of me because we'll be walking down the sidewalk and I'll see a mom with a little carriage and I just can't stop but look. Or, you know, we'll be at a restaurant and I'll say, oh my God, how cute. And he'll say, what are you talking about? And I'll say, that baby over there. He's like, oh, I didn't even see him. <laughs> but I just, oh, I just love kids. I love their curiosity. I love seeing the stages that they learn. I just love everything about them. And I've been babysitting for years. So I've experienced a lot of different kids and a lot of different moms and a lot of different homes and experiences. And it's been such a learning experience for me. So if any of you have any um, questions about babysitting, 
or what life is like as a babysitter, I'd love to chat with you about it, because <laughs> I have many different opinions. So as far as kids go, they've always been in my plan, and I basically will be a mom, come hell or high water, no matter what happens in my story, it will happen. I just knew as an actor, first of all, I wanted to focus on my career for a little bit longer, and then of course, I had to navigate this whole health situation, and so this has taken a little bit of time. So I started this podcast, and of course it's inspired me, it's encouraged me, it's motivated me, it's opened my eyes, it's done more than I can even explain, and all of you mamas are just so inspiring, and your stories are so beautiful, and you're so open. I had a friend recently say to me, do you think having the podcast is making you feel more of your yearning to have kids, or is it just two separate things? And you know, it's hard to tell. I think it does naturally cause a little bit more of a yearning for that stage of my life, but I think it also coincides with just the fact that I'm getting older and I just want that sometime soon. But unfortunately, it's not going to be as easy for us as just deciding to try. So that leads me into the process that I'm in now that I wanted to share with you. And if you're still listening here 20 minutes in or whatever, <laughs> um, thanks for your support. But basically, this is where I'm at now. So on October 1st, I decided to start a new diet regimen. I found a book called The Myers Way. It's written by Amy Myers, and it's an autoimmune diet and anti-inflammatory diet. And basically what I'm trying to do is make my body as strong and as stable as I possibly can so that when I do go off of this medication, I don't have any kind of a flare-up. Because basically, my doctor told me that as I go off of the methotrexate, if I have any sort of inflammation or response, that they're going to have to put me on another biologic. And they wouldn't put me on Humira again, but in my opinion, let's be real, all those biologics are the same. And they're just shooting your body with things that they've only tested for a couple years at this point, five years, three years, whatever, it's even 10 years, which is not very long to test a medication in my opinion. And while they say it's safe to have a baby on these medications and these biologics, I, it just doesn't sit right with me. And I would so much rather not be on a medication if it was at all possible. So my thought process is I get my body as strong and as clean and as healthy as it can possibly be and then I start to go off the medication and in a perfect world I completely get off the medication and I have no reaction and no physical response and I'm able to just be off of the medication and then we can start to have kids. I'm praying that that's the case but we'll see what happens but the process is going to be long because the way that it works is I'm on five pills of the methotrexate and I need to go down one a month and so I drop down one pill see if I have any reaction if I don't I drop down another and so on and so forth so if all goes smoothly that would be about five months but now if I have a reaction that'll end up taking longer and then once I'm off of the medication for five months I have to then wait about another six months before we could even start trying. So I have no idea what's about to come up for me um, and what the future holds, but that's what I'm looking toward. And so this diet, <laughs> oof, it's been an adventure. Basically, it's a whole lot of meal planning, but I can eat um, vegetables fruit and meat. Preferably the meat is organic and grass-fed. And um, basically other than that, I can't have gluten or dairy, processed foods or sugar. And for the first 30 days and even now because I'm starting this introduction, reintroduction phase, so I'm also not able to have legumes, 
or nightshades, meaning like eggplants and tomatoes. No grains of any sort, so no rice, no quinoa, no caffeine, um, basically no fun. (laughs) No, it's been okay. I've been trying to find my way and have a few treats of healthy foods. I've been loving uh, dried mango and figs, (laughs) so those are my treats. But yeah, it's been... um, It's been quite the journey, and it's been a struggle, but what I keep trying to remind myself every time I'm tempted to grab a treat or a sweet or something I shouldn't, um, I just keep picturing myself pregnant, honestly. (laughs) Um, Sorry, I'm getting emotional thinking about it, but... My husband tells me not to uh, stress about it, and I'm I'm not. I just really want this, you know? So what I think about is a name that I've picked out for a future child, and I try to keep saying that name over and over again every time I want that piece of candy. <laughs> and that sounds so stupid, it sounds so silly, but I don't know, that's what's been working for me. And I've only in... The past two and a half months, I guess, had um, like one and a half trip ups. (laughs) But other than that, I've been pretty stable. In addition to the health stuff, um, I'm still trying to work out um, almost every day if I can. If I can't do every day, then just as much as I possibly can. I'm also seeing a chiropractor on the regular trying to make sure that my spine is all working properly. And I'm also getting colonics, so that might be TMI for some people, (laughs) but if you're ever curious about what a colonic is like, I would love to talk to you about them because I think they're amazing. Uh, They're really the most amazing thing I've ever experienced health-wise, and they make you feel so great, and it's just so natural. So those are kind of the things that I'm doing to help heal my body. And I'm really in the midst of it right now. That I'm talking to all of you unbelievable moms about your journeys and I'm kind of just starting mine. And I thought that this would be an opportunity to have the podcast so that not only can I kind of support myself in hearing your stories and thinking that I'm going to have my own story someday, and it encourages me through this diet and through these struggles that I'm about to combat, and it also encourages me to know that every mom, every woman, every person has their own challenge and their own struggle, and we all just go through it in our own different ways. And so... I'm really excited to see what my mama journey is for the future. I know that I'm going to have one in some capacity or another. And I'm just so grateful that you all are willing to share your stories with me. And so I just wanted to take a moment to open my heart up to you, to say thank you, to explain to you where I'm at, and say thank you. I mean, I'm learning so much about what it is to be a mom before I'm even there. It's like I'm taking a master class. It's like I'm getting my master's degree in how to be a mama. (laughs) It's the coolest thing. And the other part is now I feel like I can hang with the moms because as you get to that age where all of your friends are starting to have kids and you don't yet, sometimes you feel like you can't, you know, you don't know the lingo, you can't hang with all the moms, but now I feel like I can. Because I get to refer to all of you and say, oh, well, my one guest talked about this and I learned from my other guest this and it's super helpful. So I just wanted to open my heart. I wanted to share it with you. Thank you for listening, for supporting, for sharing the podcast with a friend or a mom. And I hope that you continue to do so. Well, that's it. There you have it. That's why I started this whole thing. But the story doesn't stop there. 
If you don't follow me on Instagram, first of all, I'd love to see you at Mama's In Training Pod, P-O-D. But I just shared last week that I am officially off methotrexate. I stopped taking one of my last two medications, and this is a day that I have been waiting for for eight years. Now, I still have one more medication to go, and this doesn't mean that I'm in the clear, but I am manifesting that this is the start of living a medication-free life so I can move on to my journey, hopefully soon, of motherhood. This has been a long road to travel and will continue to be, but I am celebrating the milestones because it keeps me going, and you, all of you, keep me going. So thank you to each and every one of you for the personal support and the support of this podcast. It truly has been life-changing to see the impact that it has on others' lives. It, it drives me more than anything. Thank you for welcoming me into the mama community without being a mom yet. Thank you for learning alongside me. Thank you for teaching me. If you have enjoyed listening to the show, it would mean the world to me if you would first text a screenshot of the show to an expecting friend or mama friend and tell them to listen. Two, if you would follow the show, or it used to be called subscribe in Apple Podcasts, now it's called follow. If you listen there, I would love if you press the little plus button to follow. And third, if you would write a review, there is a super quick and easy link to do that in the show notes. By doing these three things, our community will grow and more women will get the support that they need and hear how we all really, if we have the opportunity, need and can prepare for this motherhood journey. And last but not least, there is more support for you in our Facebook group, Mamas in Training. So check out the show notes right below where this episode is playing in the description, and I cannot wait to connect with you. I am a real person. It's just me responding to your DMs, your emails, no bots here, and I am just so grateful for your support. So here is to a healed body, mind, and spirit, and remember... We are in this together.